Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Colonel Stephen Mariano. I work at the uh, Chief of Staff of the Army Strategic Studies Group. Uh, the question is, uh, could you comment a, a little bit about the third uh, element that you mentioned, which was forces to counter these threats? I, I didn't catch a lot in there. So is the answer just a current, a smaller army, a current version of itself, or are there different kinds of capabilities that you would advise General Odierno to start thinking about creating or doing away with? Yeah, I would just say on this question, the key issue is what you think are the areas of the world that matter, number one. Two, what the threats are in those regions, and then what kinds of forces you have to build. And the question that was asked up here dovetails with the one that you asked. The question that came in is, how would you articulate the Army's force projection role in US grand strategy going forward? That's the first question, and you, your question is the second question. Once I answer that question, then I can go to your question, okay? I would answer this question by saying what the Army ought to do is emphasize the Persian Gulf and talk about the importance of some form of rapid deployment force and then make a very clear case for exactly how many divisions you need to handle the Persian Gulf. Second thing I would do if I were the Army is I'd talk about the importance of maintaining peace in Europe. I would emphasize what a wonderful job we have done since 1989 by keeping a reasonably large army force in Europe at maintaining peace there and how important it is to do that over the long term. I'd make the argument that peace in Europe is of great importance to the United States. It's not an argument I believe, but it's an argument I would make if I were in the army, right? So I'd put the Persian <laughs> Gulf, I'd put the Persian Gulf up in bright lights, I'd put Europe up in bright lights, and then I'd say with regard to, uh, uh, to Asia, in particular Northeast Asia, it is very important that we keep a large army contingent in Korea for purposes of extended deterrence. One of the biggest problems that we, the United States, face is convincing the North, uh, South Koreans and Japanese not to go nuclear, right? And we have to convince them that our commitment at the nuclear level is credible. And the best way to do that is to maintain ground forces in South Korea so that if the North Koreans attack, the Americans are automatically dragged into the war, right? And those would be uh, the contingencies that I would emphasize. And I think I could tell a quite compelling story, right, if I were the Army, as to why those contingencies matter. Then the question is, what kind of forces do you build? I don't know how to answer that question with any specificity. But you know, if you're talking about Korea, you're talking about the Persian Gulf. And even if you're talking about Europe, you're talking about brigades and divisions. You're talking about you know, the old-fashioned, old, you're talking about old-fashioned land power. And I think you could make a reasonably good case for a large army. The biggest problem that you face here, from an army perspective, I think, is how powerful is China going to grow to be? And how severe are the budget constraints going to be? In a world where China gets really big and really powerful, right, uh, I think that causes the Army problems. And if the budget constraints are intense over the next decade, continue to be intense, that causes the Army big trouble. But if the budget constraints are not so bad, if the American economy recovers and the Chinese stumble in certain ways, right, and you can tell a good story, then I think the Army is in much better shape than it otherwise would be.